Welcome to the Zoning Advisory Committee meeting of August 5th. Um, so thank you all for coming in. Nice sunny summer day. <laughs> At least it's not oppressively hot. Yeah. Um, so tonight we are going to start with our guest um, speaker, so to speak. <laughs> and we have some questions. If you could come up um, to the table and just uh, um, Mary Jo, um, we were hoping for some <coughs> insight into the tax assessments and how they're done and what the possible, you know, what the options are and basically where our revenue comes from as a town because we've um, discussed it from time to time and, and we have various levels of knowledge, <laughs> so. Well, I, I did ask Nuanis if he would join me tonight. However, he is teaching assessing at UMass this week, so uh, we're very fortunate to have him as our assessor. He's, he's extremely good. Um, so I, in the future, I think maybe he should be included or you should, you should ask him if you have further questions, okay. but having been an assessor for a long time, I thought I'd come and see if I could help you out. Uh, you gotta give me some idea where you wanna go though. What kind of questions are you interested in? Because it's seven courses to be an assessor. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I can't explain all seven of them, okay. you know, kind of thing. Um, perhaps start broadly with, you know, residential versus commercial, are they assessed the same or differently? Oh no, they're assessed differently. Okay. Absolutely. And yeah, go ahead. Um, um, most of the time, well, there's a number of approaches to assessing property, and one is the sales approach. The other is replacement costs new. Okay. Then there's uh, income and expenses. And um, basically, they use the sales approach mm -hmm. for residential property because you have many sales in, in the small area all the time. And then for commercial industrial, you must use two approaches to value. So you have to use, um, you can use sales, you don't have ter many, terribly many sales. So um, replacement cost and income and expense is required by the state. At least income and expense and uh, sometimes sales if you have enough. Okay, so income and expense um, is for the business, you know, in the case of commercial real estate. Yeah. It's for the business that's, residing there <laughs> um obviously replacement cost is is about replacing a if building on a, an old bill a, a building down and had to replace it today new yeah that so okay and then sales new. is using comparable sale prices of houses which makes complete right, sense from market residential <laughs> standpoint yeah so um so for commercial you need to use two different yep, you have to use two different you have to apply Two, two different methods. ways of, of doing the property. It's required by the state. Okay. And then, um, and is that every year you you do that as you did that estimate by two methods for every property that's you commercial? adjust. You send out the income and expense forms, mm -hmm. and then you adjust property every year for sales. You know differences and um, income and expenses, but it's not necessarily do you revalue the property every single year. You adjust uh, for mostly for new properties and things like that. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. You are required every three years to do um, a, a, a semi-revaluation and every six years to have a reval company come in and do a, a big revaluation. But even on the third year, the state comes in and pulls your records and takes a look at, goes out and takes a look at what you're doing and how you're doing to make sure that you meet their requirements. Okay. So it's adjusted annually, but, um, but larger um, revaluation. And the annual adjustments have to be reported to the to state too uh, yeah. and how it's happening and, and they okay it before you can do the recap sheet. Okay. Which is how you set the tax rate. Okay. So every year they are involved. Okay. To some extent. Okay, so 
Um, so when we're talking about the value of a commercial property, for instance, um, it does depend on the type of business that goes in there because the s income and expense of that business, potential future business, um, does affect the tax rate on that property. Yes? Yeah, it affects the valuation of the property. Valuation yes. of the property. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks for correcting the terminology I'm using because I know <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm all over the place with it. <laughs> the best businesses you can have, however, are businesses that are going to stay here a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so vacant properties, how are they assessed? They're assessed as vacant properties. It depends on when they're vacant, how long they're vacant. Um, they're not bringing in income and expenses, so they are definitely assessed as a, as a vacant piece of property. Um, so, so is, you know... They're, they're not given the same value as, as an, an ongoing business at that okay. time. Okay. But they're still, they're a building, they're land. Yeah, and, and that has value. Commercial, and that has value, yes. But it, but it will have more value when there's a business in it. Yes, occupied. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so vacant. Um. Yeah, we'll have personal property too, usually once they're occupied. Right, and personal property is, you know, obviously equipment and things like that. And used in the conduct of doing the conduct business. Of business. An example I was thinking of earlier was um, these uh, storage facilities. Yep. Now, some of them are just big, empty, not empty buildings, but, you know, storage yeah. buildings. Others are very, very highly assessed because they're climate controlled, they have all kinds of air conditioning and all kinds of, of special equipment. You know, some of them have a lot of uh, forklifts and things to move stuff around. And uh, I know I have one facility in Plainville that was just state of the art and, and it brought in quite a bit of, of tax money. But the empty buildings, uh, with just the storage units probably aren't going to bring in what this one would. So right. every property is different. I mean, not every property. You can't just say storage buildings are going to bring in X amount of money and they're going to... Every property is different and valued on its own. Okay. Okay. Understood. Um, yeah, go ahead, Ria. Mayor, do we have any differentiation um, between a property that's a lease and a property where the company owns the property in terms of valuation? You mean it's a, a company owns the property is leasing the building? Versus a company who owns the Owner building. Owner and occupied? Yes. Is there any differentiation in terms of? Well, it's the, the, in, the income and expense and, and it is valued as a rental, as a rental property as opposed right, to. Right, because you're looking at the income of the rent. Mm -hmm. Versus yeah. if an owner operator doesn't right. have a lease, right. is there, how do you make the Well, we have leases and, and, and we have uh, all kinds of state guidelines, guidelines and other properties that are, are assessed the same throughout the state that we can tap into. And, and reval companies are, are really good at that. I mean, if we had a, a rental business here that was the same as a, as a rental business in another town or city, we can, we can look at them and see how they, uh, how they match. And that's how, how you match. identify for an owner occupied? Yes. Okay. So, I'm sorry, just to clarify, if, um, if you're running a booming business yep. in a property that you're renting, the assessed value of the property is based on the income and expenses of the rent. the owner that's the renting, rent. or the business that's in there. Only the rent. Well, it's <laughs> we don't assess. We assess the prop the property itself, and it wouldn't be on the bu the booming business necessarily that's in there. They would have personal property. Personal property, yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, but the, the owner of, of the building is assessed for the building and the property, and he has to report the income. Uh, he has to report what he's getting for rents and things like that, and all those rents are taken into consideration, like a building that rents tons of office space. All of those rents have, have got to be reported and then figured out per square foot how much the building is worth. Okay. 
Interesting. And that's private information. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> One question that came up during the discussion was just as you said, the income and expenses determine it. Does the business hour matter? If a business is, uh, if, the, if it stays open for longer, the income is higher. Does it mean that the tax revenue is higher because of that in any way or doesn't hours could be. don't affect? Could be. Could, it could? Mm -hmm. But again, it's based on the rental income right. expenses, it's not based on the business. Right. It's property. It's property. property. Not it's real estate tax. Yes, it's real estate tax. Right. Is anybody exempt from personal property, or do all businesses pay it? Well, we just we just passed a bylaw in town that people under I don't know it was a thousand or, or two thousand in personal property won't be taxed because it's a thousand dollars is the tax rate. So you could get seventeen dollars for somebody who has a thousand dollars in personal property in the town meeting voted, I think it's now 2000, that they would not go into the personal property because it costs almost as much to send the bills out and collect it as it does to, you know, to go through it, yeah. And um, with educational or philanthropic institutions or um, um, museums or things like that, um, how is that? Now you're in a complicated <laughs> area. <laughs> Um, some of them are exempt, mm -hmm. depending on the nature of some of the philanthropic or, or educational things that rent their buildings out. You can cha you charge them for that. Okay. So it, so it depends on how the how the property is being used. Right. Okay. So it's completely exempt. Like they don't pay any taxes whatsoever. There are some. Some, okay, some categories. All right. If you're exempt from real estate taxes, are you typically exempt from personal property taxes also? Yes. Are they separate? Okay. In a, a lot of cases, uh, some school kind of buildings or things like that that are exempt from real estate tax often give us a payment in lieu of taxes. Yeah. And they do it to cover their fire and protection, police, and that sort of thing. And they will give the town, and it's done in a pilot program, and they, they make a deal with the town. And we have a, we have a couple of those. Okay. That wouldn't really, don't really have to pay taxes, but, the, but they do. They enter into a program in which they make a payment in lieu of taxes to the town as a good citizen. And we do have a couple of those. All right. Any other questions? Okay, I'm going to summarize what I heard, so I just make sure that <laughs> I have my notes right. <laughs> <laughs> there's so there's so much. I mean, I know. you know, when you take each of you these know, courses, it's like, ugh. Like and, uh, years of study down into one page. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so residential property is done based on uh, the Market value mostly. of the property and the real estate itself. Because you have, itself. we have. Tremendous amount of sales. And a lot to, of, yeah, sales of the properties that can be used for comparisons. So that's, compare, that's relatively you know, easy. Yeah. To, um, businesses are done based on um, two methods. Right. I'm yeah, not going to ask how you average and figure required. out which one you. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and that's usually for Hopkinton, you're using the sale of properties or comparison properties. And or replacement costs. I mean, more whatever, costs. whatever you can, because uh, sometimes there's no sales. But that is one of the values of having a reval company is that they have all this data right. on what sales in all the other communities throughout the state too. Okay. So you can find a like property, and then you have to adjust it for time, expenses, and, and the town itself. Okay. The location. You know, you, you can make adjustments with it within these sales okay. approach. And then um, income and expense for the business, for the mm -hmm. owner of the property, um, goes out questionnaires and, and, um, and that is used for one of the evaluation assessments right. or adjustments. Um, Re-evaluation is done, you said, on some sort of three-year, six-year schedule? An, uh, there's an uh, adjustment every year, mm -hmm. 
and then there's a three years the state comes in and, and takes a look at what we're doing to make sure so it's, a, it's like a mini reval year okay and then uh, on the sixth year it's a full blown reval okay got it so the income and expense of the owner but you also said the personal property of the actual business that's running is is tax. also included. Mm -hmm. So there's, well, there's no, the personal property would go to the business. The personal it's property, there, it's there. Like if they have forklifts or if they have. Uh, okay, so so for an office building, this is one of the pieces I might have gotten wrong. Yep. <laughs> so for an office building um, that is being leased to to various businesses. Um, you're you're consulting with the um, the owner of the property, the owner of the building. That's on the real estate. Yes, that's but on we the real can estate. Do the so individuals? The individual the businesses. Property. You also look at the personal property mm -hmm. and you add those things together. No, I'm not they're happy. separate. They're separate. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but some people just get a personal property bill and no real oh, estate. Oh, okay, bill. okay, got it. I understand. It's a different different bill. Okay. I get it. But the income and expense, if a business is leasing their, um, their space, the income and expense of that business is not part of the tax um, basis because it's they just, don't own it's the just their rent. They don't own the property, so that's not real estate tax. Okay, got it. The owner of the building and the rents and the, okay, all, good. that sort of thing is done and then it's Okay. Even a cap rate, and it is a, it's, it's just huge. <laughs> okay, and so fun, they, they fun can, to do actually, yeah. but so occupied properties are obviously higher value than the exact same property that's vacant. Mm -hmm. um, for, and I, you know, when you I say higher value, I'm saying for the town revenue, tax revenue. So, an, an example would have been GM when it went out in Framingham. The, the tax was the evaluation was lowered considerably while it was vacant and uh, okay certain people in the town went kind of crazy because it was a lot of money that wasn't coming in but you can't assess for something that's not there right and once it was occupied again then it was assessed differently again okay and is there generally a, a lag time of you know when a business is getting up and running and or you know it? Well, it wasn't, property, property yeah. is assessed as of January one, mm -hmm. except okay. we have a Hoppington bill which we initiated a good number of years ago when I was working in the office, um, where new construction is brought up to July first, so we get that extra uh, that extra six months for new construction. Oh, okay. But uh, for the most part, every year property is assessed as of January 1. For, for any property that's newly constructed, is it at the point it is issued an occupancy permit or when, is it, when does it officially become part of the tax rolls? Well, we can, we can get it in increments if, if, we, oh. if it comes in, in certain, certain amount is, is, is reached or done. Oh. I mean, it doesn't have to be fully completed okay. to be taxed, but you have to tax it. You tax it the percentage that's done. Okay. As of January one or July first. Okay. Go ahead. I've I've seen a lot of properties that are built and leased uh, to national companies, and the combination of those is much lower than when they sale at a cap rate. Do we? change our tax immediately to that higher price as of january 1 or as of july 1st okay. not not the day that it that we get the information no okay but it, it, the lag time is of january. there is a, there is a lag time with assessments yeah right so in other words the um the apartment complex when it sold for what 92 million or something like that it was like four times what the value was originally yeah. yeah when it was built but it was but it was you know only up to a year of lag time right, right. Well, the whole so. property went from like nine hundred thousand dollar valuation up to like 123 million total when they built it and then when they flipped it yeah well i'm just talking that, that whole yeah. parcel yeah that 200 and something acres right okay. so all those people okay. that work and then yeah, sorry. Um, 
Fair kinds of lease versus own personal property. Okay, and then education. An example of why everything is like January one. I mean, some people come in if your if your house burned down in March, you would not get a discount for it. Mm. If it burned down in December, you would not be assessed for it as of January one. But because of insurance and, and whatnot, you expect to have it rebuilt by the next January 1. So unfortunately, there's no assessment change. Oh. We don't change, and nothing can be changed in, in midstream. Yeah. So, hmm. uh, you know, they give you a trailer to live in, and they rebuild your house. And, and it, and, but the next January 1, if it's not finished, then your assessment is a partial assessment for what is there. Okay, yeah. I think that clarifies my notes. And does anyone have any other questions? Go ahead. Has um, the chamber had a number of business owners come forward and say their taxes went up dramatically recently? Can happen. Has there been a change in which of the evaluation formulas the town has been using? No. It could be that uh, because of, of the dates of revaluation and somebody hasn't been out there or something happened and, and it wasn't at 100% that it, it was brought up to 100% and that could, that could make a difference. Because we are supposed to be at 100% all over, and you know, or if uh, a reval company goes out and finds that it was incorrectly assessed, it will be brought up to 100% when it's found. I mean, there's no increment of going up; it's either there or it's not there, so it can happen. But the, the methodology has not changed. No. Any other questions? I want to thank you so much for coming in and helping us learn That's a little easier bit than more. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because there's, there's, there's always the abatement process too. Just to just to bring that out, where mm -hmm. if someone is aggrieved of their value as of July 1st or January 1, and they can make out an application, come in. They can come before the board if they want to, and we will discuss. Then can get you can get your property record card at any time and take a look at, at how it's exactly what's there. Uh, we try to get into every property every so many years. We do what they call cyclical inspections, and the assistant assessor goes out constantly and does a section of the town, a section of the town, a section of the town. So we try to. Uh, enter every property. You don't have to let us in the property. It's always better if you do because um, you can, we can assess at 50% more than what you have as a valuation. And believe me, then you want us to go home. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yeah. but, but we don't want to do that because if you apply for an abatement, we just have to reduce it and give you your taxes back. So it's not something <laughs> that we indulge in much. But you're always better off letting the assessor in to see the property because if you don't, they have to, they have to by law, assume highest and best use. That makes sense. Yeah. So by assuming highest and best use, you can sometimes have a bathroom you don't have. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, something like, something small like that. But the bathrooms are expensive, so they add, they add a lot. Uh, so you're always better off letting them see exa exactly what you have, and then you're assessed for exactly what you have. No more and no less. Good. Oh. That's you. it. That's it. Jeez, mm -hmm. that was easy. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, really. This is very helpful to us. And like I said, next time have John in. He's out okay. teaching the courses, and he's, he's really a fabulous assessor. We're very, we're very lucky to have gotten him, he's been teaching for the Department of Revenue how to assess property for a number of years now, and he is very good. That's great. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Good resource. Okay, um, why don't we cover next the professional office district? And um, I think that um, even even though uh, there's negotiations ongoing with a developer to purchase that property, 
Um, solar. And yeah, but but that they would develop part of it for solar and probably lease out the building. That's at least their you know very preliminary plans if they purchase it. I think that this discussion about whether or not educational uses and overlays and all of that and all the research that's been done on that is going to be useful to us f for just in general for the zoning. So um, if, if you two could walk us through all of the um, information that was provided. I, um, I did not read all of the zoning bylaws from the other three towns. That I didn't. <laughs> but I did. But I did skim them. <laughs> I wasn't here last time, so I, I know it, we didn't. We didn't really talk about anything last time. So more than just what you and I met with John. So John um, summarized your discussion in a memo. Okay. And then he, and if you remember a few months ago when you'd sent me um, some zoning bylaws and some mm -hmm. summaries that you had found from other. Um, towns he included those in a packet and um, you know overall just you know your overall um, impression of, of what has been done By elsewhere and what we did yeah and what else what else what you found you know so, what you so ultimately the three of us sat down and talked about the property and talked about things that we we thought would be a good use of the property um, that would not necessarily cause terror in the neighbors um, we ultimately wanted to add education as a use, as a stated use, as opposed to a Dover Amendment use. Rhea has some um, thoughts on that and comments. I'm sure she's happy to share on that aspect. Um, we were trying to come up with uses that, that wouldn't necessarily take all the, the greenery out of the property. We want to, you know, maintain the green that's there. So we were looking for uses that would take a big area, but not necessarily a great deal of buildings. So we talked about rehab facilities, um, talked about training facilities for service animals, mm -hmm. um, thought that would be a good use for the property. I was supposed to look for language that encouraged those uses, and unfortunately, I was not successful. Um, I think they just kind of you know, they, those type uses fit in so many places that they don't need special zoning to be there. Um, if, if I may, a lot of that green space is, is leaching field. So a lot of that green space won't go away. Is what, I'm sorry? Leaching, leaching field. Yeah. Leaching field. And that's, well, in looking at the, the notes. Uh, so by, that's default, another, by default, it's just, yeah. it, it's always going to be there. And there's a lot of wetlands on the property. Yeah. Yeah. And there's the the pipeline easement that goes through the property, which also provides some challenges. Yeah, oh, it's that's right. It, uh, this goes back now. Um, not accessible by public transportation. It's about three and a half miles from both train stations as the crow flies. I know. Um, the, the property has a lot of challenges to it, and then it doesn't have water or sewer. So it's... They've got a... But they... Um, uh, Worked around that by they, they have a 10,000 gallon storage tank uh, inside the facility. They they planned for for, for uh, further expansion when they were building the facility. They did some so as far as even though it's not set up for water and sewer, they they can go a long time keeping keeping sewage in there if they needed to store it for a while. Mm -hmm. And again, you just heard from Mary Jo that mm -hmm. some of these uses, educational and philanthropic uses that don't necessarily pay taxes, will pay in lieu of taxes to offset the expense of operating in that location using town facilities. And when you three were discussing this, what what were your criteria and your summary criteria of, of what you, you believe the, uh, you know, maintaining that neighborhood um, character and so on? What, what criteria for a business use in that area? Uh, low traffic okay. was one. That was a big one. Yeah. Because it is an accessibility issue. 
And at that point, I, I don't think we were aware of the water and sewer restraints that are also on it. No, we were only also on aware it. of the easement, yeah. which cuts the property in half. Anything else other than the low traffic? Well, I think I'd have to say that a lot of the things, like we went through a lot of things and they were discarded for reasons. It wasn't necessarily that we were trying to avoid things. Mm -hmm. um, but as things came up, we said, no, that, that can't work there because of traffic or, or just things. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I and mean, we went through a lot of potential uses mm -hmm. and just, we were looking for a use that didn't generate a lot of traffic. Um, so that's why I guess rehab <coughs> facilities sort of came into it was because there wouldn't be a lot of coming and going. There wouldn't be a high volume thing. Um, and there's a lot of, you know, natural area that I thought would be conducive to that sort of facility. I'm not sure that. That I was John thought like that would be well received by right and assisted the living. I, I I threw out there, but I mean even assisted living has traffic. Mm -hmm. But maintaining the vegetation screening seemed to be you know an important criteria as well. Looking right. looking for yeah, low noise, so basically yeah. something that fits fits with residential. Well, even even um, Liberty Mutual had 125 employees at one time. But they hired quiet people. They just they, they just grew from a from a, a garage, right. basically. Yeah. Into, into well, this that process place. has been sort of self-selective. Mm. <laughs> we don't have anybody because there's so few people that make sense. So it's not like. Okay. I mean, trying to open it up to everything, most of the companies don't want to be there because it's so far off the beaten path. Okay. Maybe it would be a good spot for a um, high-level self-storage facility. That's true. It would not be a lot of traffic, but... Wouldn't the, have the building's not really designed for something like that, though. Okay. <clears throat> it would have to be it's torn got, down and do another... It's really... It, it's It's... That'd be like a secret. Yeah, it really would be great. As I said before, it's great for a school because it's got all of those. Yes. It's got all. It's got rooms bigger than this. You know, see, there's there's a, a half a dozen rooms that seat uh, between like 60 and 90, and there's there's a lot of classrooms and that's what it was for. That's what they used it for. I mean, they did do flyers and uh, outreach to lots of educational facilities. Uh, um, when I talked to him, you know, unfortunately, there was a lot of spending about 10 years ago, and now there's sort of like a, a freeze on spending for schools because there's been such backlash. Mm. Backlash. Because people are saying, look, you know, there's a lot more money going towards this than there is housing, for example. Oh, okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments on or this wonderful theory? suggestions that would make it a, you know, a very desirable property? Should maybe we should start working with the people that uh, that may be purchasing it and see what. Yeah. Because you know, now at least we get another. You know, we we had we had the you know the real estate people from Liberty Mutual. As you said, reaching out to educational facilities and stuff, and see what what the um, solar people have in mind, and maybe we can. Yeah, I thought the solar people wanted to cut down trees to put a solar field there. Yes, they would be cutting down <clears throat> I know. tree I know. clearing, I know. which which I mean that we're trying to avoid that because that's. I I know. Yes. And, and then if they get stuck with the building, trying to lease the building still, then it's like, okay, what do we accomplish? <laughs> really, you want to you want to do something with the building because it's a higher a higher level. I, John, I, I've been I, trying to help you. I'm. I'm, I'm oh, I know, like, I know. It, I'm just, like, I've been trying to go it's through. So, it's just so sad. Though. You know, it's the it's, <laughs> it's, it's you know, 
you know, such such a, 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 a great valuable property that's just tough to get to, that that could could be used for you know a, a much better. You know, as soon as I heard that, it just I just said, oh, they're gonna be, oh, they're gonna put up a solar facility. Oh, great. You know, but then there's the other side of it that says, oh, solar's good, solar's good. Solar is about good. Half I, of, about I'm not particularly a big fan of clear cutting oh, to put up solar panels. No, I, I get it. Totally support solar on top of buildings, mm -hmm. yeah. on top of garages, you parking know, lots, parking. Yeah. Or reclaimed land. Mm -hmm. You know, you know it's uh, right. So part of this property, a uh, part of the part of the their proposal right now. Um, would be using already cleared land, but part of it would be clearing trees. So that would be the um, the test track, I believe, and other you know open areas on the Liberty Mutual property. By, so by that, doing that, you limit the number of parking spaces for the use of the building, and but, that becomes a problem. <laughs> yes, but there's also <laughs> the you know we're hoping that the uses they find for it wouldn't be high high traffic high commuter you know, so. right but this is a big building so you really have to look at it's how many square feet yeah, yeah it's not it's not insignificant and to use that other than for storage yeah. empty space you're going to need you know a lot of parking spaces that's just a fact because oh, yeah. you can't walk there from the train station so nonetheless this is it's just a very preliminary for them right now, but um, but you know, I think I mean I can I can reach to out to Bob to McGuire them. again and see if there's been any other activity other than the solar just to see. Yep. I mean, sometimes the market shifts. A building will be on the market for five years, and then all of a sudden something shifts, and everything in that particular category goes like that. So it's just the loop we're in right this second. Okay. Yeah, if it, if a right business can find it, people will will come. But it's you got one of the biggest companies marketing it. Yeah. No, no, not the, not in, in the sense. I was thinking in terms of like, yeah. say, YMCA Hopkinton is in the middle of nowhere, but for the camp, people are ready to put up with the traffic and put up with everything. To it's just the right fit that has to happen. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Okay, so yeah, anything that you know you feel would be useful to, to reach out and um, I you know I have the the seaboard solar um, uh, information and I can reach out to them. Again, I think you know letting the broker know what uses um, that the town wants here and you know will support. It's very helpful. Yep. Um, I mean, like I said, I, I, I lived in Southboro. Harvard University had the area where they had the chimpanzees being tested in the woods because obviously nobody wants to hear about chimpanzees being tested. And then um, Boston College uh, bought a property next to the neighborhood that I grew up in in Dover, and that was, uh, you know, it's a, a retreat center. It's probably, you know, a way of hiding some cash for a later day, but. Right now, it's a it's a retreat center. It's very low traffic, mm -hmm. but you know it's a very expensive property to use as a retreat center. Yeah, and Warren Conference Center, of course. Right, Warren. Exactly. It's another one. Uh, but through the church, do we have to be careful telling the uh, the real estate company that we want low traffic? We want you to put something there, but we want low traffic. We don't. We want you to make it as as valuable as possible, but no people. I think we have to be careful. Um, you know, let's see what they come up with before, uh, because we got to think outside the box. Uh, uh, you, know, you know, that build, that building's been there for so many years, and nobody complained about it. And there, and there, there were a lot of comings and goings, and we may be putting more uh, weight into low traffic, low traffic, low traffic, because there, there was 90,000 square feet and there, there were people coming and going every day, taking classes and, and learning about crash tests and 
and learning about uh, building products and, and, and all of that, because it was more than just the workers that were there, there were people that were going there for classes. And that we, we haven't had any complaints about the way that they had it. As a matter of fact, that would always seem to be the poster child for perfect lighting at mm -hmm. most of our meetings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. Okay, mm -hmm. so I will, I will at least reach out to Seaboard Solar and just uh, see if they have any other information about, um, you know, potential uses for the building that they're talking about. So, um, and and just let them know that we're open for discussion. So. Um, I obviously, you know, we have to be careful, you're right, not to commit to anything well, and maybe, not to, you know. Maybe we should put it more like we're, we're here to help. Yeah. As, you know, as opposed to open discussion, we're here to help and see mm -hmm. what they come up with because we, we, we do want the highest and best use. <clears throat> okay. Good. And I, I, I hate to say it, but more than, more than a solar farm. Yes. And that being a good segue into our topic for the solar overlay, which I thought Ted found some really interesting um, things about. Uh, did everyone get his email? Mm -hmm. um, I saw it just as I was walking in the door. So okay. I'm happy it's pretty it. short, but, um, but, it, but it also has um, links to, um, to the actual mm -hmm. bylaws. So, um, what day did you come? Uh, today. Mm -hmm. oh. So he, um, he researched solar farm overlay districts in Wellesley and Weston. So and the Wellesley one was passed in 2017. Um, and his summary is, Wellesley passed the bylaw creating the overlay district in the northeastern cloverleaf at the intersections of 9 and 128. Um, as part of their effort to qualify for the um, Massachusetts Department of Resources and Energy Green Communities Program. Um, and you know, he mentions that we are a green community, we're designated as a green community, and we have been at least <coughs> since 2010. But the bylaw established the Cloverleaf as the only location where large-scale solar farms mounted on the ground can be put in Wellesley. Um, it also, you know, has a minimum output of electric power production. Um, so that's the only place that ground-mounted solar farms are allowed. And the the Attorney General approved the bylaw, and no entity has challenged it to date. You know, that was passed in 2017. Um, and that, you know, that this is something that. Um, I mean, obviously, it's very new information for us, but I'm, I'm just surprised, and I, I really feel like we'd want to discuss this directly with our town council to understand how, how they could designate a particular area and say that's the only place you can put ground-mounted solar in our town, and that that's legal for the state. So, or, you know, it seems to be. I read Ted's notes. I did not go back and read the bylaws I didn't that either. he referenced because I didn't have time to do that. But I think it's worth reading the bylaws and seeing because do we have that sort of space? You know, what in town? Because we don't need to own the property. It just needs to be in town, right? To zone it how you want to zone it. So the property, and I think that's where we need to do a little more investigating, where Wellesley did that. Um, who owns the property that yeah that they put into that zone exactly and exactly. if it's just the state that owns the property i'm with you how do you go about doing that because you're preventing anybody from doing it unless they go through the state to do it and maybe the state's very amenable to leasing out their land on a yeah 20 year lease i don't maybe. i, don't, I don't, know. don't know but i think it's worth taking the time between now and our next meeting to actually read the bylaws and and look at the maps to see you know, ownership of, of the property. I think that's an excellent idea. And they're not, from what I'm reading, they're not restricting small stuff. They're just restricting big stuff. Yeah, 250 so if you, kilowatt hour. 
if you wanted to put a small thing somewhere in Wellesley, you could do that if it was... But is there any, other than Wellesley Country Club, is there, are there any big tracks available in Wellesley? No idea. That's yeah, we've question. got We've got tracks. We've got, yeah, we've got lots of land. It seems that this, the this town a, owns a lot of land, though. So. This, uh, I think Wellesley is much more concentrated than we are here, so that, that was kind yeah. of my question. Is there, is, there, is there land available in that town um, to have a large solar farm besides... Right. What they're talking about. So, and who could afford it? I, I was going to say I don't know right. whether it would be yeah. cost effective, but there's some schools and there's some big private properties in Wellesley that if they sold, and again I don't know. Yeah, they're people cost effective, semi, but, semi report rather put a, a oh. dozen houses mm. at, at Wellesley prices. to putting up solar. For, it's mm. still even with all the all the uh, kickbacks and stuff. It's still not worth it. Well, before we spend too much time talking yeah. about how we think maybe it might work, uh, it might be worth just reading it to find out how it is actually working. Yep. And then talking about it. And then um, he also summarized one from Weston, which was passed in 2011 or 2012. Um, it has not been challenged. It was approved by the Attorney General, et cetera. And um, it... The town first looked at all the land that was town owned or controlled, searching for suitable zones for solar farms. They settled on a capped landfill that was along an unused railroad tracks that has since been turned into a bike path. And um, they, they actively sought a developer to do solar farm um, for that particular site. And and he adds that no solar farms are permitted as a primary use on any private land in Weston. Um, although, you know, because certainly they can, they can have I it know. on the roof. We, we had to be careful with so. our setbacks. They kicked up, remember they kicked stuff back to us? Uh, yeah. With, with some of that, the stuff. How did that work? We couldn't even, we couldn't even mess with the setbacks at one point. So, so this, is, this is why I think, you know, as Carol is saying, let's make sure to continue to research into this because I think Ted found some very interesting things here. Let's all read these bylaws. Everyone who's, who's reapplying to the ZAC, um, if you're not reapplying to the ZAC, you can feel free to read the bylaws just for fun. But, <laughs> but we have to be careful because they might be writing this bylaw and it really means nothing. Could be. Because it, it hasn't been approved by the state. Because No, but it no, has. It has. The attorney general. The attorney general approved both of these. Right, so. but, but but what I'm saying is there may not there may not be anything that is developable, and, and it just it it's a oh right it, yeah. it it's moot. There's nothing. So that's what we have to look in, in context because we're, we're, right now we're looking at Wellesley and Weston, and talking about solar farms where it's it's you know and I'll check with some solar people. And see what the price of land is where it, where it's just not viable. And mm -hmm. uh, you know when you're paying a million dollars an acre, it might not be worth it. Well, that's true. Well, what is the price now? Do you know, in Weston? Also, if you can find anything, it's just that's the problem. It's not an acre. It's like you know a yeah. sliver. Exactly. And um, Ted also, Ted and, and John um, also passed on a letter, a copy of a letter that um, uh, Carolyn Dykema sent to the head of the Department of Energy Resources. Um, they're in the process of revising their SMART Solar Incentive Program, and she just had some suggestions, some of which were encouraged by Gary Trendle of our planning board. Um, and reflect some of the planning board's um, recent issues with, you know, people clear cutting to put up solars, solar farms. So, <clears throat> um, so that was an interesting letter, and I think that um, you know it just shows that we have, you know, other people, you know, encountering the same types of issues, and um, there's some support for that out there. That. Uh, through the chair, just in response to what John said about land being available yeah. in those two towns, when the state is looking at bylaws, I don't think they're sitting down and saying, 
what kind of land could they put these facilities on. You know, they're not checking the availability. They're just looking at it whether or not it's legal. Right, but I think the reason why it hasn't been challenged is because... Nothing's happened. <laughs> because <laughs> nobody would have confined, no yeah, um, yeah. Maybe. But if, but if it, but if it, by having a bylaw on the books that has been approved by the, the attorney general can help discourage people from um, ground mounted solar and clear cutting for that purpose, that's something to consider. But what section of our town would we designate to be, and have it allowed? That's something you know what I mean? Because that, because then that those those are the people that those are the, the forty people that will be here and say wait 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 why'd you why'd you pick us? Oh, we're gonna pick South Street. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 oh, well, I know it's that you know it, we are a green community. It was you know I was mm. part of the Sustainable Green Committee when we did this thing and. We wanted to um, provide some guidelines to the planning board for where these things should be cited. We were told basically to wait for the state to give us some guidelines, and now it's been a free for all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> I was like, I remember. Yeah. So, okay. So we will continue to work on this. Yeah. Um, I, I do think it's really important. Did the state ever give us any guidelines other than when they kicked back the that they kicked back a draft of the bylaw when we? I think they gave us rules what it couldn't be. Okay, that's what it was. Okay, yeah, and we had that's when we revised it. I think that was. And we went right to we went right to the edge of. Yeah. Did we get the um, the trees part of it through? Remember, we didn't we modify yeah. it. Yeah, that was approved. Did it get approved? Yep, it was. That was screening, better screening. Screening, yeah, okay. But I think by um, starting to differentiate um, the the um, clear cutting of trees, I think they, uh, the, Carolyn Dyke may use the the term brownscapes on you know, ground mounted solar on brownscapes versus on greenscapes. <laughs> you know, so. Um, and, and that's, that seems to be a big issue. Um, uh, I find that problematic, <laughs> to say the least, when people are clear well, our dump trees. Got, our dump got flooded when they built 495. Mm. I didn't hear what you said. Our dump got flooded when they built 495. It's now wetlands. <laughs> so we can't use that. OK. We had, let's see, other than the minutes, did we have anything else on the agenda for tonight? I don't think so. I'm just checking my images just so that I forget anything. Yeah, that's what my one of these things supposed to be nearby. Oh, yeah, I just, I, I just switched it to, I was looking at the, uh, uh, I'll, put, I'll open yeah, it. Lots of, we could ask Ron, he got the agenda. Ron got the agenda. He just didn't get the packet. <laughs> no, I get it. I, I'll, I'll pull it back. There's so many emails. <laughs> there were. That was the most my fault, mostly. <laughs> <It's> like, <sighs> now you know what it's like working with me. <laughs> I'll put up one second. Here is John. Yeah. Tax revenue discussion, work plan items, which were education uses, professional office district, solar farm overlay, and approval of minutes. Okay. Okay. Good. The agenda. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, um, have people reviewed the minutes from June seventeenth? I did not see a draft minutes for July fifth. Fifth. Whatever it was. If we weren't an official meeting. Hmm. Oh, was it not an official meeting but, because we weren't a, a quorum, so there was no minutes? But I suppose course, that makes sense. Of course, there was no discussion mm -hmm. of anything. Right. Okay. Course, so there's no minutes. I guess not. Oh, no, no, we couldn't okay, approve no. the minutes from the previous meeting yeah. last right. time because we no, didn't. No, 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 yeah, I read the ones you have, but I missed that one. That, yeah. That's what we are approving today, right? Okay, so, yes, June 17th from two are the minutes yeah. from two, two meetings ago. Okay. Yeah. So we may never have minutes for the one in July because was it wasn't the last one was before. Right. Okay. Any updates, typos, anything like that? I didn't find anything of substance. 
Nothing. It was good. I, I felt like I was there. I mean, nothing to <laughs> correct of substance. I'm sure. I'm sure some of the things were longer than two sentences. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. <laughs> Fill in the Otherwise, it was, that was a 20-minute meeting. <laughs> <laughs> we're not quite that efficient. Well, I noticed you guys left five minutes after I did. Yes, that's right. And you're like, <laughs> Carol's gone. Why should we even be here? <laughs> So I will make a I'll motion make a uh, to approve the minutes so as written. written. All in favor? Aye. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of us. Okay. And opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Um, I just wanted to mention one quick thing is that I met with the fire chief and one of his people, uh, whose name I can't remember at the moment. Um, and I took lots of notes, which I will share at, at a future date, um, about residential sprinklers but also just a bigger um discussion about uh safety in general and kind of this the brainstorming solutions not just residential sprinklers but that's one solution that um that can you know besides building more um fire stations buying more trucks hiring more people residential sprinklers is one alternative to um to providing better you know safety service and so on um also just you know the education process that's um that's important around um that type of thing with developers as well as with um residents so um so we had a really good discussion and um and i'd be i'll be very you know happy to share things with with us as we um go into our next session in september um, I don't think we can set a meeting date for September until everybody gets reappointed, um, unless the, the ongoing members can probably could probably <laughs> um, at least agree to a tentative time. But uh, let's see here. When when do the appointments happen? End of August. the the reappointments. I'm sorry. Yes, the reappointments are going to be discussed at the planning board meeting next week um we won't have anybody but, from cba we haven't met <laughs> that's fine and then then there's other committees that need to appoint their members um chamber needs to appoint theirs um um cba as you said um who else conservation committee conservation. chamber sent an email to john today okay good um so like we will be able to planning board will be able to I take care of some of, of them <laughs> <laughs> planning board will be able to take care of some of the appointments next week but not all of them because you know some of the committees um aren't, aren't meeting probably during august at all i imagine i don't we don't have anything on yeah that there's no hearing schedule so i don't know when okay. we're going to meet okay so i just did that yeah how does it know who i am uh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I just hit the apply for the position. I pushed it and it said applied. So you're already logged into you your Google account. Say, I'm not logged into my Google account and didn't know why I wasn't getting the stuff and how I couldn't apply and all oh, this so stuff. Oh, so it did. It oh, was. Then, then that's quite efficient then. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Hey. You already logged in. You know, you're not logging out. Oh, okay. All right, so be aware of that though because. <laughs> It's a big deal. <laughs> Good point. Okay, so there is a planning board meeting on September 9th, and that is probably when the rest of the appointments can be made. We might have to wait for ZBA to appoint and, you know. Um, <laughs> so a tentative meeting, our first tentative meeting in September could be September 16th, all right? So if you want to put that in your calendars tentatively, and then we'll... We'll get a, a message out to that effect after the planning board has done its thing. Okay, good. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? We are adjourned.